everybody. I'm Amanda Rueda, and I am a senior product manager at GitLab working in the plan stage and focused on planning. Um, I want to walk you through how I use GitLab features in my planning process as a product manager. And specifically for this video, I'm going to focus on um, decomposition of large initiatives or features using, um, using GitLab epics. Okay, so in this case, I'm showing you um, an initiative that we're actively working on, which is work items. And this is a very large work effort that spans several um, different groups here at GitLab. And you can see just how large this work effort is because we have dozens of sub epics here for individual feature sets. Um, and when we expand one of these, you can see how we have broken down that individual feature into smaller work items using GitLab issues. So before I dive into how this is broken down, I wanna kind of um, point out some important features of epics that you're gonna to wanna to use for your planning processes to make them easier in the future. So the first one is dates. Um, you can set fixed dates on the epic if you'd like, or you can allow them to be inherited. And inherited will simply scan all of the issues that are related to this epic and set the start date as the very first start date of um, the issues that are under the epic and the due date as the very last one. So if I were to add another issue and I put it I don't know, um, out to November of this year, this will update to November. And these dates are important because when we take a look at our roadmap, um, the plotting of this epic and then its sub epics will be based on the epic start and due dates. The next thing that's really important are labels. Um, you're gonna want to add labels to your epic in such a way that you can use them to filter. So whether you're using an epic list, an epic board, or an epic roadmap, the labels will allow you to target the information you want and um, get rid of the noise. So in my case, I like to apply um, a group label, which represents my group, to our epics and issues. Um, another label that would be helpful that I am currently using is a time-based label so I can take a look at maybe everything for this year versus everything that I was working on last year. Um, and you could get really creative with labels here. So you can customize that to your needs. The next thing is the epic color. Um, once you get to roadmaps, the epic color will allow you to kind of distinguish epics by visual representations through color. These can be, it can represent teams, it could rep represent initiatives, could represent goals, whatever makes sense for your organization. Um, and that's basically the, the metadata that I think is really important to make sure that you're adding to all of your epics. So as I mentioned, this is a really large initiative that's across um, all groups. So I'm actually gonna take the group label off because it's more than just um, my group. And I'm gonna apply something that's um, a higher step above group here at GitLab and that's DevOps plan. So that applies to both my group and my sibling groups within plan. Okay, and now let's take a look. We, we see that the initiative is work items and um, let's take a look at an individual feature within this um, work items initiative, and that is subscribe to notifications. So just like we see here on this epic, there's a little toggle to subscribe to notifications. We have this throughout GitLab. We have it on MRs and issues. And what we would like to introduce is the ability to subscribe to um, notifications for this work items framework that we're implementing. And so this is a sub epic of that parent initiative um, for work items, and it is still too big to be an issue because there are a lot of moving parts to implementing notifications. And so the way that I like to um, break down my epics, and not everybody does it the same, so take this with a grain of salt, but I like to create a design issue 
a back end issue and a front end issue for all of my work. And if for some reason it doesn't need one of those, then I omit it. Like for example, if it was API work, I wouldn't need design and, and front end. Um, but typically our features require all three. So what this allows me to do by having these three separate issues is it allows me to um, stagger the assignment of time of when I hope to get this thing scheduled and, and into the dev cycle. So with design, for example, here, this was scheduled for the last milestone, 15.9. I um, have the back end scheduled or actually whip in the current milestone and then the front end in the next milestone. And this is because we, we don't want to work these things in parallel, right? Back end should be aware of what the designs are for this feature to make sure that their back end um, can accommodate that and also the front end. Um, the other nice thing about creating three separate issues for this work is it allows me to block um, the front end, for example. So if I open up my front end record, I can see that this work, front end work item, is blocked by the design, which is now closed. So it would technically not be blocked if that was the only thing that was here. But it is still blocked because it's blocked by back end. Now, sometimes we can get started on front end and stub something out, just wait for back end to ship. But um, I like to stagger so that we can uh, start something when it's completely shovel ready. So once this back end ships, then this will be unblocked. And you'll notice that I like to use workflow labels to also designate that. Um, and then we can get started. So this is a very um, simple example of how I like to decompose um, features starting from large initiatives to a smaller feature set and the tools that we need to make sure that we can pull on these efforts in different views like list boards and roadmaps. Take a look at future videos where I will show you those next steps. Thanks so much.